Today I'm gonna to show you how to make candied tomatoes that involve no sugar, but are gonna be a delightful sweet treat that are perfect for any antipasta platter or on top of chicken or fish or mixed with eggs. You're going to love these. Hi, sweet friends. I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, sourdough, ferments, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, if you've harvested a lot of tomatoes from your garden or you've purchased them at the farmer's market at, or at the grocery store when they're in season and you have a real abundance of them, and you've made tomato sauce, you've canned crushed tomatoes, and you've made fermented salsa, and you need another idea, candied tomatoes are it. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm using an Italian plum tomato, aroma tomato, but any small tomato works very well for this. And all we're gonna do is first start by cutting it in half. So all I'm gonna do is take out the blossom end, and then I'm just gonna cut out, oh, there's my oven, it just came up to 325 degrees. And all I'm gonna do is just take out a little bit, not too much, because I wanna leave in the majority of the flesh of the tomato, so I'm just gonna cut out a little bit of this white uh, core here. And that's it. And I'll bring you in closer, I'll take a picture so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And now I'm just gonna move on to the other half and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut out the, the little blossom end there and then I'm just gonna take out some of this white core. The next thing you'll want to do is get a baking sheet. I've got mine covered with parchment. You can do that, or you can use aluminum foil, whatever you like, just to make cleanup easy. And then we're just going to take our halves that have the core and this blossom stem end removed, and we're going to just start placing them right onto our baking sheet. Now I've got my tomatoes all cut up. Now don't throw any of this out. What you can do is you can scoop up some of the liquid that holds the seeds and you can just use a strainer like this to just push some of the little bit of juice and pulp through, through the strainer and then you can collect the seeds and then you can save the dry, rinse them off, dry them and save them for next season. So if you live in a warm climate like me and you can do a second planting of tomatoes in August, you'll be all set. And once you collect all the seeds that you want, don't throw away these pieces that you've cut out of core and maybe some pulp, whatever the case may be. You can dry this in the oven or you can dry it in the dehydrator and then you can grind it up and make a little tomato powder, which is wonderful for sprinkling on pretty much anything. You can mix it with salt and use it as a seasoning that way, or you can add it to soups or stews. It's very versatile and, and flavorful. Well, I was able to fit about nine uh, Roma Italian plum tomatoes here on my baking sheet. And that's really a flexible amount. You know, it's not set in stone. Whatever you, whatever size of tomato you're using and whatever amount you can fit on is fine. The next thing that we're going to do is take some olive oil. And you're probably gonna need, for this amount of tomatoes, you're probably gonna need about a quarter of a cup but again, this is very flexible, not an exact science. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is just start to sprinkle each tomato with a little bit of olive oil. And that's all you gotta do, it's very easy. And the next thing you wanna do is take some salt. I've got some nice sea salt here, and we're just gonna sprinkle each tomato with a little sprinkling of the salt. Now at this point, that's all you need to do. However, if you want, you can add a little additional seasoning at this time, and that's what I like to do. I also like to add a few twists of freshly cracked black pepper and then a little bit of dried oregano. And uh, I grow a lot of oregano in my garden. It just does so well here in Central Texas. And if you want, I, if, if you like to dry herbs, uh, if you homegrown them and like to dry them, I have a video that I'll link to in the iCards uh, where I show all the different ways that I dry my herbs. But I just love the taste of oregano and so I like to add this to these tomatoes. I feel it just adds a little something special uh, to the overall flavor. Now these are all ready to go into a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for about two hours. And then when we take them out of the oven, we're gonna let them cool a little, and then I'm gonna show you what we do to pack them in a very special way that adds an extra punch of flavor. 
Well, these tomatoes were in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about two hours. They're wonderfully softened, slightly caramelized, and they're going to be so sweet because of the natural sugars in tomatoes that have now concentrated. Now I'll show you how I like to store these to really make them tasty and wonderful to have to be able to pull out of your fridge at a moment's notice uh, when company comes over to throw together an antipasto platter or a quick meal. These are wonderful. Now what I like to do is you can get any kind of jar that you want and then I like to layer these on top of one another and just put them into a jar like this <laughs> that, and cover them with olive oil and it keeps them nice and moist and yet intensely sweet and then you can just take this out, you take as many out as needed and you can put them in whole uh, with a chicken dish or put them on top of a fish dish. You can chop them up uh, or you can just layer them with some herbs and some cheese for a quick appetizer or you can just pull them out as is and put them on an appetizer, a nice antipasto platter. They're so versatile and so tasty. Well, definitely, let's taste one. They're really delicious. See, and they're still, whoops, they're not like the tough uh, sun-dried tomatoes. They're just like little, little delightful candied tomatoes. They're so sweet and pliable and tasty. <laughs> Keep a hold of this one. All righty, let's give it a taste. Mmm, so sweet, moist, delicious, the salt, the herbs, it just all comes together so beautifully. These are wonderful. They're just so wonderful to add to any meal and especially nice. I really like it for an antipasto platter because you can just take a cracker, a little cheese, or put one of these down and then put the cheese on top of it. Everyone's going to love these. And then all I take is, and I like to use extra virgin olive oil, and I just take the extra virgin olive oil and I fill up the jar with it. And what's doubly nice is after you use up all the tomatoes, the olive oil has such a wonderful uh, flavor to it between the herbs and a little bit of the salt and the tomato flavor. It's delightful. Once I get all the tomatoes covered, I just put the lid on and then I just pop this in the fridge. And in the refrigerator, the olive oil would become a little more solid, but don't worry about that at all. When you're ready to use these tomatoes, you can just fish them out with a fork. As I said, put them on your antipasto platter, add them to a chicken dish, a fish dish, whatever. The olive oil will soften up very quickly. If you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you all the different ways that I like to dry herbs, including the oregano that I used in here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.